The big question is, will AI, artificial intelligence, take over the world and take over coaching in general? So what I want to share with you is that there are very specific things that artificial intelligence is really great at and some not so great at it. So whether you're a health coach, whether you're a doctor, personal trainer, yoga instructor, whatever you may be doing, especially in the virtual realm, we want to be cognizant of what artificial intelligence will be better at us at, but also what we will innately be better at as well and then play to our strengths. All right, everybody, we're back with a brand new Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. This is episode 322. If you want the three big takeaways and to follow along with all of the notes, head on over to ihp.coach slash 322 for all the details. Let's dive into it here today. Keep in mind that over at Equal Life, we have run over a half a million private client labs, literally over half a million. Okay, so... I, I like to think that I can remember client results and try to keep a lot of information in my head. Can I remember 500,000? Absolutely not. Can I remember 100,000? No. What artificial intelligence can do is they can scan through all of those labs within seconds and pull out exactly the information that you need or it needs. For example, over at Equalife, we're very big on privacy. We don't share data with anyone. We don't share data with insurance companies. We don't share data with uh, your medical doctor, with anybody. But we have all of the data anonymized on the back end. And what we're going to be using it and what we've always done is use ethical-based standards to anonymize all data. So all you see basically are numbers on our end. We don't see any patient names, et cetera. Okay. So then we can say, based on this information, what are the top three food sensitivities? from over, let's say, 10,000 food sensitivity tests. Okay, from over 10,000 glyphosate tests, are there pockets around the United States that are people are being exposed to glyphosate at a higher degree? That would be really amazing information for all of humanity, right? Like, what really important stuff. Well, we're going to be able to do that because of artificial intelligence. We'll be able to heat map the United States based on glyphosate exposure, based on mold exposure, based on low vitamin D or whatever it might be, and hopefully find these things faster in the future. So I think that that's pretty amazing. So myself as a practitioner, I will never be better at analyzing the data across hundreds of thousands of labs then AI will be. It just, it is. And again, like sometimes you just have to say it is what it is. It is what it is and that's okay. Let me just give you another example though. Artificial intelligence can look at all of the different nuances really quickly amongst five to 10, let's say, labs that a client has. And let's say that there's 300 different biomarkers. It will be able to correlate information between those biomarkers faster and not miss anything that a human may miss. So that's pretty fantastic. So inside of Equal Life right now, we give recommendations based on all of the things that we see that are off, high or low on labs. Now, the nice thing as a practitioner, you get to decide if you're going to do that or not, but either way, nothing is missed. So that's pretty amazing. Now, here's the reason though why I don't believe artificial intelligence will ever replace health coaches. And that is because artificial intelligence does not in any way, shape, or form, are they able to convey personal touch and empathy? And here's what that means, because it's two different standpoints. So the personal touch is saying, you as a human, as a patient or a wellness client, are not just numbers and you're not just data. You're not. And so what we do as health coaches is we do a consult. We speak to people. We understand their story. AI doesn't necessarily know their story. And then what we're able to do is the recommendations that are given by the AI, because I think we should have those because it's based on, they didn't come from nowhere, right? So the recommendation inside of Equal Life is based on 500,000 labs. It's based on the curriculum that I've written. So it gives you at least a basis point, but the personal touch means, oh no, no, actually that 
clients already tried those things. That's not necessarily successful, or um, they don't react well to that specific herb. The things that you can get from all the different human conversations that you've had with the individual that gives you that leg up. But overall, it's the ability to convey it human to human. That artificial intelligence, even if it gets great at one-on-one communication, you will know that you're speaking to a non-human. Even if they have even greater intelligence in the future, it's still non-human. So I do think that health coaches, personal trainers, anyone in the service-based business, you're not going to go away. Because a human doesn't just want the data, they want the personal touch. They want to know that there's another caring individual on the other side that's going to get them the information, but in a humanized way. Let me, let me give you another example. Let's say that you've run a food sensitivity test and it gives you eight different foods, 12 different foods that you're sensitive to. Maybe it's 20. And let's say it's for a teenager. That teenager is going to have a really difficult time. I remember me as a teenager, all these foods I was sensitive to. I would not have been able to just eliminate them completely. However, I went to a skilled nutritionist and an integrative health doctor, and they said, listen, you're higher in like 30 foods. Uh, you tested for 190, you're higher in 30. You're higher in, oh, maybe even more. Here's the main ones that we want you to eliminate. What do you think about that? And I would have a difficult time eliminating a couple. They said, okay, let's keep in those one or two but we're gonna eliminate the, the others. Now that dramatically helped me to empty my rain barrel. Wasn't able to be perfect, but that's okay. That's where that human touch comes in. Being 80%, 90% is still gonna get you most of the results that you're looking for. Another big part that AI is gonna have a really difficult time with, at least for years to come, and that's accountability and motivation. I don't feel that most of us feel accountable to our Apple Watch or Aura Ring as much, we're really being accountable to ourselves, right? So we're not necessarily being accountable to the device, but we're accountable to us. Many of us are, not all of us, right? Some of us, and myself as well in certain areas, much more challenging because I can know I can get away with it if it's just me. All right, but when there's another person and you know that you have a meeting with them in three weeks from now, two weeks from now, or weekly, let's say, with a personal trainer or whatever it might be, you, you know that you're going to be held accountable. They're gonna ask you, why didn't you gain the weight? Why didn't you lose the weight? Why didn't you stick to your nutrition? Why didn't you follow your supplement plan? Whatever it might be. So knowing that there's going to be another person asking you how you did is much more likely for you to stay accountable. All right, I believe, and I know that there's probably gonna be a little back and forth in this, but I believe that in terms of privacy, what you share with another human, especially like an integrative health practitioner or a doctor, they're gonna keep it private. They really are, I truly believe that. But if you're working with a big pharma-based company that's gonna use artificial intelligence, your medical doctor is part of the conventional medicine-based industry, I don't think that your data is private. I don't think that what you say to the AI in terms of a pharma company is gonna be kept private by any way, shape, or form. And I think it's a high, much higher likelihood that working with an independent small company or practitioner, your, your privacy is going to be kept to a much greater degree. I truly believe that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I mean, may, I'd love to be proved wrong because I'd love to say like, oh, all these pharmaceutical and big tech industries, uh, they're going to keep your information private. Well, they haven't yet, but hey, who knows? Maybe they'll start in the future. All right. I've got one more point for you right now. And that is in the short term. Meaning like when you're on a call with a practitioner, I believe that they are more adaptable in real time than artificial intelligence. Meaning a quick sentence can change the way the conversation goes and the recommendations made. Or just that personal touch, going back to that. So I'm a 17 year old kid in the integrative, or it was 19 at the time, 19 year old kid in integrative health practitioner's office, also meeting with a nutritionist, all these food sensitivities. My mom had no idea what to do. I had no idea what to do. I all of a sudden had to like eliminate all the like foods I was eating basically. What do I do? And they could see the look on my face, they could see my level of concern. And they, and they knew that this was just not going to be possible as a 19-year-old with limited resources in the first place. So within a minute, 
the dietitian was able to make the changes right there on the spot. With AI, I'd have to go back and forth, back and forth. It would have to learn me. It would have to understand me. It would, it would have to understand it on a more complex, um, two-dimensional, back and forth, non-emotional sequence than the dietitian or integrative health practitioner looking at me eye to eye, knowing right away that this was not a possibility and making changes on the spot. That is what gives the personal touch to personal trainer, integrative health practitioner, acupuncturist, naturopathic doctor, etc. All of those professions give the human element. And the human element, at least not for many, many years to come, will never be replaced. So we should work with, and I would say somewhat embrace, artificial intelligence for making less mistakes, for us checking our work against the recommendations, but also not taking that as the end all be all, and then adding the human element to that, which I believe is going to make sure that health coaches and the service industry are here for many years to come. I'd love to hear your thoughts though. Feel free to leave them in the comments below. We thank you. We appreciate you for being a part of this community and we'll talk with you soon.